So this is the joiny point for the Renas and the Blader River. And in this foliage is the Blader River. Foliage, I should know where it is, it's all the dangons I think. Again, it's different to the last time I was here. We really got washed away from here. The blade doesn't have the force of the Renas Falls. Never mind, so it comes down for the hills. and there's paths everywhere as I said on Wednesday in February with kids delight with an element of danger you have to be watching them I knew there was a herd of Highland cows up here somewhere Bluebell Day Oh boys be well it makes a good sight. It's rather beautiful though. Slippy in the old wellies, I have to say. So we're walking along the Blaber River, Blaber River path. And this starts up in the hills above Gleber. There's a lovely little room at the top called Dream Beery or Woodscroft. It's another one we're going to catch sometime. inspired to write a story one of my books and it's on pike and I've got the bottle over here to stick it with this video Ned and Molly had lived in the area for all of their lives they had, they had six children three of each they all had lived at home and the eldest being 12 and the youngest only two like their father they were all cheerful and full of devilment Although Molly had born nine, as was the hardship of these days, most families had still born or children lost to illness. Don't forget in these days, immunisation was unheard of and most death certificates were worded with the phrase, died of consumption. Ned was a craftsman, his trade was a wheelwright and he owned a smithy up in the hills, not far off the track. Although short in height, he was stocky and muscular. Even though he had lost one of his legs below the knee, it didn't seem to affect his ability to work. His leather apron was always worn and he always had a big beaming smile. Nothing ever seemed to get him down. When all around was doom and gloom, he would always find something to be cheerful about. He learned his trade from his father, nothing from a book, just purely from experience. Bogies, stiff carts, gentlemen's transport, even the odd wheelbarrow, all succumbed to his prowess. Ned's only passion in life was fishing, and if he had his way, he would have sat on the riverside all day. If working went a bit quiet, off he went, 
down the river bank and set up as well. He was quite proficient and managed to catch a reasonable amount of trout and such like, which always went down well with his family. His favourite haunt for catching the biggest fish was a certain river and a large pool. Nobody knew how deep the pool was as it had never been plumbed, but it was situated at the bottom of a powerful waterfall, which has gouged out the rock over many thousands of years. The sides were worn smooth and the water tumbled into the abyss constantly. Even salmon could not escape the waterfall and that spawning would be found swimming around exhausted with their efforts to jump the waterfall. Ned's life changed one fateful spring day, it had been mild and the flowers were starting to bud up well and the river had been gushing faster than ever. The pool was dark and booty with the blackish colour that follows a downpour, hiding what was ever dwelled in the deep. Ned sat down on his hand-built stool, got out his rod and started to bait the line. As he was engrossed in the task and he noticed ripples in the water, not the usual little trails, but a force which sent the water lapping up the sides of the lagoon. Being a fisherman, Ned always dreamed of catching the fish that every every once. With mounting excitement, Ned got out the strongest line and the biggest rod he had. Under a certain amount of trepidation, he cast his line into the middle and sat down and waited. He didn't have to wait long before there was a big tug of the line, which caused Ned to slip off and into the water. He felt a severe pain in his leg just below the knee. The line jerked free and the water went calm. Ned dragged himself to the side and pulled himself up the bank. His, les- his leg was in a right mess. There were several big bites, blood gushing from it, and the jagged flesh ripped apart. He tore off a bit of his coat and tried to stem the flow of blood. After the pain subsided, Ned got his feet and struggled home. When he arrived home, he fell against the door exhausted. His wife came to see what all the commotion was about. When she saw the state of Ned, she sent one of the kids off to fetch the old faith healer, who declared that Ned's leg would have to come off below the knee. Now in these days, painkillers had not been invented, so a concoction of herbs and some strong liquor was given to Ned. A piece of wood placed between his teeth and the operation was commenced. Then the pain made Ned pass out, which was just as well. When he came to, he had a stump where his leg and foot used to be. When Ned recovered, he set about making a false leg. Although it was clumsy, it allowed him to get about. Ned still went fishing, but he never ventured to his favourite spot again. Keep your eyes peeled, folks, when you're walking along by the river bank. A deep pool in the waterfall may hold more surprises than you can imagine. Not the spot to have vertigo. Still enjoying this though. I hope you are. There you are, you can see what's down there. Well look down there, I'm gonna fall in. It's definitely a good force on today. I certainly wouldn't want to fall into it, that's for sure.
is funny, isn't it? It's not how I remember it. Not at all. We haven't changed that much. Well, you can see today there's no river walking. I can't else since I'm going to put my feet in that.